With a budget of $35 million, Pinocchio has been made with cutting-edge technology, with even the most minute object given utmost perfection and detail. From the animators to the puppeteers, we'll discuss some of the techniques it takes to bring a puppet to life on screen. Welcome to Galore Techs where today we will be taking a look at Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio to understand the tech secrets behind this awesome movie. The amazing art of stop motion isn't something new. It has been around since the late 19th century and has become a pretty spectacular way of filming. It's thanks to stop motion that we have amazing films like The Wolf House, Chicken Run, Coraline, and The Nightmare Before Christmas. But what exactly is it? Stop motion animation is a method of filmmaking in which objects are physically manipulated, moved, or positioned to create an illusion of movement. It is used extensively in the production of animated films and television programs. This technique was first developed in the late 19th century and called clay animation because it involved a process of clay modeling. The basic idea behind stop motion is that a camera takes photos of an object at fixed intervals over a period of time. Then these photos are played back in sequence so that it looks like the object has moved from one photo to another. In order for this effect to work well, it needs high-quality lighting and smooth camera movements over time so that viewers don't notice any jerky motions during playback. Stop-motion animation differs from other types of animation in that it allows the filmmaker to create any kind of character they wish by using real-world objects instead of drawing them on paper or a computer screen. In Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, you get an idea about how much work goes into putting together a movie of such caliber. According to director Guillermo del Toro's statement, Stop motion is the art form in animation that is most analogous to live action because you are doing the real movement. From point A to point B, you cannot edit. You're dealing with real sets and real props lit by real light. But how does the cinematography work here? Del Toro wanted immense detail given to everything from the lights and setting to the mood, the camera, and even the lens choices. Frank Passingham, the director of photography, decided to go with the Canon 5D Mark IV for filming that was able to withstand long shooting sequences up to three weeks. He also mentioned how Del Toro's other films never seem to have used wide angles, more than 85mm to 28mm, to be exact. Here he needed to go as wide as 15mm with low-wall lenses while mostly working with Nikons. He even worked with Zeiss lenses to bring out high quality. The team gathered a lot of equipment and big camera rotators for the circular shots on the film, like the one where Geppetto is having a meal with Carlo. In this scene, the entire set was stuck on the rotator and rotated as a whole, which made it easier for the animators. Dragon Frame was used as the animating software which is currently a widely used premiere frame grabbing software. It lets you shoot stop motion videos on the camera, then syncs them up into one cohesive piece of art. The characters in this film were all handcrafted, with minute details given so much attention. The puppets artists had to make sure they were able to move around in ways that would make them look alive. The artists also had to make sure they had facial expressions, and with each emotion, the puppets would show it in their body language as well. Guillermo got the best of the best puppet makers, McKinnon and Saunders. And according to the producer, Lisa Henderson, they do things that other puppet builders do not have the patience or the expertise to do. And we know patience is the key ingredient for a brilliant stop-motion film. It took around a whopping 940 days to capture the whole film on camera and 1,000 days of production. That's almost two and a half years, and that doesn't even include the pre- and post-production time. A very long schedule of a movie is considered 94 days, and this took 10 times the size of a shooting schedule. The sheer detail and hard work it took to film even one second of the film makes it that much more remarkable. For a single second, it takes 24 frames. Now multiply that by a two-hour running time. And you have 72 seconds with 172,800 frames. They were working with 40 animators and over 60 units at a time, with some going down and some going up. Each movement was set by hand, and no computer fabricated the movements. Before filming each scene, the animators would perform something called a live-action reference, where the animators would act out the scene themselves to get the sense of movement they would impart to the puppets. This allowed the animators to translate each movement correctly into the animated characters. This made Del Toro credit the animators right alongside the cast members because of their work. All the puppets were being adapted in between shots for whatever way their body parts were to look like in a puppet hospital. If they had to stretch really far, the artisans would add an extra joint to help it stretch out. The artisans at McKinnon and Saunders had already had the experience of a new kind of system in which tiny gears were fitted inside the heads of each puppet, and by adjusting the gears between frames, the characters would show incredibly detailed expressions. 
In fact, the artists at McKinnon and Saunders were the inventors of this never-seen-before mechanism, which was adapted for Corpse's Bride in 2005. It's like a Swiss watch mechanism that's connected to the silicone skin of each puppet. If you look at the gear-fitted head of the character Candlewick who becomes good friends with Pinocchio in the film, the double-barreled gear system is attached to threads set into his mouth. A clockwise turn of the gear inside the ear pulls the upper thread and creates a smile, turn it anti-clockwise, and you have a frown. Amazing, isn't it? Almost all of the characters are animated using these mechanical heads except for one that's fabricated via 3D printing, and that is of Pinocchio himself. It's because he's supposed to be made out of wood and skinny. His expressions are snappy, and the mechanical faces look softer, so they set him apart with 3D printing to ensure they had a strong puppet. A year and a half went into prototyping the main character before even the first of 20 different production models were made. They printed nearly 3,000 replacement faces specifically for Pinocchio. The story of Pinocchio is a classic tale that has been told in many different mediums, and Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio is a marvel of technology and stop-motion animation. His take on this classic tale is really an amazing watch, and we should credit them with the immense hard work that they put into it. Have you watched the film yet? If yes, do tell us what part of the movie impressed you the most. Was it the animation, the story, or something else? Let us know down below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like, comment and subscribe for more Galore Text videos. Thanks for watching.